Um, just a quick introduction about myself. My name is Liming, right? So um, I've been with Red Hat for I think close to about three years, right? Before I joined uh, Red Hat, I was in you know started off as a system engineer, you know doing high performance computing, AI, you know big data kind of machine learning kind of workload, right? Before joining Red Hat, but for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to talk about you know build in a hybrid cloud. Right? I'm going to talk about the different approaches that you know you can have. Right about the challenges, about the you know the mitigation strategies, right to help you move to a hybrid cloud environment, right as part of your digital transformation journey, right. Let's let's get started. You know where are we today, right? If you look at the you know multiple cloud types that we have, you know today on the left hand side you have the public cloud providers, right? AWS, you know Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, right? That's pretty common, right? The new kid on the block today, what is it? Alibaba, right? So we have Alibaba as part of the you know, public cloud providers today. What about private cloud? Right? You have OpenStack as a cloud you know, infrastructure right, that runs on premise. But what about multi cloud? Right? We're going to talk a little bit more about multi cloud. We're going to talk a little bit more about hybrid cloud um, in the next few slides. Right? But what is multi cloud? Right? You, know, you could have OpenStack running on premise. Right? You could you know, be using one or more um, public cloud out there today. Right, just a show of hands, how many of you guys run one or more um, public clouds or cloud providers today? Right, just one or two. What about two public clouds? Right, not many show of hands today. But are you guys aware that on the average, right, around the world today, you know, people run about 2.5 to 3 kind of public clouds around right, in their environment? We talk about a little bit about hybrid cloud. So what is hybrid cloud? Right, you see that in the in that diagram on the you know on the right hand side, you have OpenStack, right? You have AWS, right? Whether it's you know AWS, whether it's Azure, it doesn't really matter, right? But there's some sort of you know kind of integrations between that, and we term it as hybrid cloud, right? So what is exactly multi cloud, or what is exactly is public cloud today, right? If you look at multi cloud, right? Yes, you're using more than one cloud environments today, right? You know it's all essentially silo based, right? You know today. You may think about placing how to place or determine your workload, right? You could be saying that, you know, I want to place my instances on AWS because, you know, I could pay three years for reserve instances, right? I could, you know, have spot instances on AWS. But on the other hand, I want to use Azure, right? Because Azure has what the connective services, right? AI, machine learning kind of workload that I can run on Azure, right? What about, you know, HD insights, right? But essentially, right, you're just determining, you know, where to place your workload. All independently, right? Um, it's kind of like a silo, right? And you know, if you lose, the, if you start managing them, right? You think about the council, you're actually managing it very differently. But if you look at the hybrid cloud scenario, right? You know, you do have the cloud, public cloud providers. You have the on-premise private cloud, right? You talk about orchestration. You talk about automation, right? You know, the ability to move workload across the multiple environments. That's, that's the key, one of the key differences between a multi-cloud and a hybrid cloud. Right. It's about the management, right? You think about as the multi cloud example today, right? It's all about independent consoles, right? You log into AWS console, you log into Azure consoles. But in a hybrid cloud, a true hybrid cloud environment, what you're having is a unified kind of management across your know, multiple environments. Right. What about workload? Right? You know, as we move towards a cloud native kind of workload today, right, there's always traditional mode one kind of applications. When we talk about mode one kind of applications, they are your traditional monolithic kind of you know, workload where you need to pay a lot of attention to it. Right? Things that you know, we talk about comparison between pets versus cats, right? You need to pay a lot of attention to make, sh that, make sure that they are up and running, you know, alive, right? You can only scale up. But even look towards the cloud native kind of applications where you know take a look at ex examples today, right? You're talking about Netflix, you talk about Grab, if you look at the local context. It's about Carousel, right? They all are built based on cloud native applications where they deploy this application onto the cloud, right? Where they can scale horizontally, right? They're not dependent on the underlying infrastructure for resiliency, right? The apps basically takes care of all of that kind of issues that you know your traditional mode one depends on the infrastructure, right, to keep them up and alive. Right. But if you look at that, what are our customers deploying, right? This is a survey that you know Red Hat has done. Globally, right? If you look at these numbers, right, 40% of our customers are running some form of cloud, 
whether it's a public cloud, you know, on AWS, Azure, or GCP, private cloud, about 40%. But interesting enough, the numbers, about 20% on containers, 20% on the hybrid cloud. What does it mean, right? As year and year go past, right, you're looking at an increasing trend of the, you know, number of users running onto containers, right? But what are the challenges, right? You know, we talk about containers, we talk about hybrid workload today. Like, customers like yourself, in reality, you don't have unlimited right, time, right? You don't have unlimited resources. You don't have unlimited budget, right? You need to still balance the innovation and optimization across your portfolio, right? For instance, right, you need to think about your legacy infrastructure, right? How do you actually optimize it? You talk about your applications, right? How do you, you know, integrate your applications from your legacy to the newer applications? You talk about your applications, right? You know, today's standard is, you know, we all commute and you know, work on mobile apps, right? You talk about cloud native applications. What about automation, right? How do you automate your existing environments to make sure that you, know, you can get it, get it up and running, right? You know, things like that. But what about adding a cloud to your environment? Is it sufficient, right? It is not, right? Think about it. Workload today, they always do a mode one kind of workload, right? Adding a cloud does not solve the problem because the world is increasingly hybrid. Right. So what are things that keep us from moving forward? So if you look at these three buckets, these three things, we talk about you know, whether you have a defined uh, cloud-first strategy. What do we mean by that? Right. How do you get from the existing legacy kind of infrastructure to your cloud um, environment? Right. What about your applications? Do you have a strategy to say that, hey, all my future applications should be built using cloud native? What about the people? Right. Are your people trained sufficiently right, into the new technologies? Are they just you know, being, keeping the lights on? Right? They are, whether they are actually just fighting fires every day. What about the new hires that you, know, you hire? Are they you know, into DevOps? Are they you know, building, you know, equipped to build new technologies? What about data and security? Right? Uh, you know, is public cloud less secure than on-premise? Think about it. Right? If you look at Stack 2018 that happened, I think a couple of weeks ago, where GovTech they mentioned about you know, GCP, um, government, GPC, sorry, government private cloud, and government commercial cloud. Right? As the government of Singapore is moving towards you know, cloud, right? even you think about it, right? is it less secure or is it more secure? As they you know, move towards, as a whole nation of Singapore, right? most of the workload from the government are all moving towards the cloud itself. Right? What do you need to do? Right? What, how do you build with the future in mind you know, as part of the you know, cloud first strategy? Right. You talk about you know, open standards, right? Open standards being the ability to interrupt with multiple systems right, together, right? You know, if you talk about um, open standards, one good analogy that I would like to use is about emails, right? You and I use emails every day, right? You know, whether it's dependent whether the email server is based on Linux, it's based on Windows, or it can be based on the cloud. It really doesn't matter because you and I, we check our emails on our browser, right? We check our emails on our iPhones. We check our emails on our Android mobile phones, right? As long as it's based on an open standards, you and I can communicate with each other, right? What about workload portability, right? Think about it, right? How do you make sure that your workload can move around into multiple environments, right? As long as it enables IT, right, to meet um, business needs, right, and to tap on new technology, right? What about scalability? Right, you need to think about it, right? How does the modern infrastructure scale right, as you meet new business demands? Right? What about unified management strategy? Right? How do you maintain policies and governance across all these um, multiple environments? How do you make sure that you, know, you get a single pane of glass right, you know, to get visibility across your entire multiple environments? Right? So let's look, dive into what is hybrid cloud infrastructure in action. Right? Some of the opportunities that we see right, um, there's no right or wrong to um, all these steps, right? You know, some of them, you know, some of the customers like ours um, will go straight towards a container platform. Really doesn't matter, but it's always as part of a journey, right? Let's dive a little bit straight into um, all of this, right? You talk about workload-driven strategy, right? How do you build um, to define it with a hybrid cloud platform, right? A hybrid cloud platform, like I mentioned earlier in the first few slides, it's about a private cloud, right? A private cloud infrastructure and a public cloud infrastructure, right? It doesn't really matter 
if it's one or more cloud, but it's more about the integration and connectivity between you know, multiple clouds today. Right? You get a unified management across all environment. That is, again, very important. Right? How do you gain insights to your consumptions? How do you gain insights to your compliance on policies and governance across your multiple environments? Right? It needs to be able to support containers. Right? Because later on, I think in the next few slides, we'll talk a bit more about containers and why is it important in your hybrid cloud journey. Right? Containers allows you to move your workload right, across multiple environments easily. Common industry standards and API, right? That's something that's very important, right? Open standards, right? It means that you can interrupt, right, with you know multiple systems together, right, to make sure that you know you can talk to each other, right, in a, using an API uh, fashion, right? So if you look at this chart that um, Red Hat did a survey, 60% of the workload is increasing more, you know, moving towards a multi-cloud or hybrid cloud environment, whether it's you know specialized business process whether it's you know, HR account applications. But if you look at the last row, right, you talk about data processing, you talk about analytics, you talk about BI, right, you talk about big data, it's more than 60%. Why so? Right, it's because of the number of data that we need to you know, process. Right? Today, you're talking perhaps only terabytes of data, but tomorrow, you could be petabytes. Right? How do you have a cloud environment right, to be able to crunch all these numbers, computational, right, as the infrastructure scales? Right, that is very important, right? The, the, the bigger the data, the bigger the infrastructure you need to have. And cloud provides you with that flexibility, right? What about the foundation for hybrid cloud? Right, you talk about public cloud, yes? Right, but what, what do you need to think about it? You know, what do you need to think for a public cloud? Right, think about the standard operating environments. Think about your applications. Whether is this supported or not, right? Whether it's on-premise, on the private cloud, all the way to the public cloud. Think about your applications because your business needs it. Think about data, right? What about data protection, data backup, data recovery, whether it's the same set of software that's being used on-premise or on the cloud, right? Say, for instance, AWS. To back up on AWS is going to be very different from backing up on-premise, right? Because the operating environment is essentially very different, right? You need to think about those. What about um, data, what about applications? Whether can they move to the cloud themselves? Right? Are your policies, data residency rules, allows you to move to the cloud? You need to have that kind of um, policies, governance, to make sure that you can move to the cloud. Right? Unified management, right? as I said earlier, is important. Right? Management strategy right? to be able to manage all the multiple environments um, in a unified uh, fashion. Right? Let's look at one of the top drivers um, for public cloud adoption, first three, IT costs. Right? That's pretty obvious today. 48% is all about IT costs. Public cloud, yeah, sure, you don't need to, I mean, you don't need to buy servers, you don't need to maintain servers, you don't need to operate servers, right? Everything is taken care of for you by the cloud provider. System agility, you're looking at 37%, right? Why so, right? Because as a public cloud, you have access to almost unlimited cloud resources, right? Scale on demand, scale up, or scale down, depending on your business requirements. Improve access to new technology, 35%. What does that mean, right? If you look at cloud providers today, humongous number of SaaS services, things like, you know, we talk about Azure Connective um, Services, we talk about Azure HD Insights, or even AWS EMR, right? These cloud providers are coming up with new technologies every day for you to consume them, right? And it's very easy for business with a credit card, just go online and start consuming all those resources, right? What about private cloud, right? You still need a private cloud for a hybrid journey, right? What, what, what exactly is private cloud, right? Basically, it's bring all the benefits of a public cloud onto premise. Think about cloud computing instead of having on the cloud, have it on premise, right? With all the you know, goodness of multi-tenancies, right? With multi-tenancy, you can support your line of business, multiple units of your organizations on premise, right, together with compute resources, right? You can provide compute resources, you can provide storage resources, you can provide network resources to your organization. Not only that, private cloud today, something called value added services that you, know, you can provide, things like uh, load balancer as a service, right? Things like file share as a service. So all this multi tenancy, you know, software as a service capabilities can be you know, providing resources 
to your organizations, right? So what about private cloud? Why do customers choose private cloud? 80% says that it reduces risk. Why? What risks are they talking about, right? OpenStack, private cloud, is all based on open API. Right, that's, again, very important. Right? If we talk about open standards, we talk about open API. What it means to you is that there's no lock-in, right? because there's a huge amount of ecosystems in OpenStack that allows you to integrate with multiple suppliers, things like storage, things like compute, commodity service, things like networking. Right? The API is the same regardless of the underlying um, connectivity or underlying infrastructure because it's all modular. Right? You talk about um, driving business growth. Right, so that is, again, one of the you know, key benefits of private cloud is because of the you know, agility that it can provide to you right, from, as a business. Right, it allows you to scale up and down on demand. Right. What is, how is private cloud being used today? Right? There's three, calls, no, three modes of operating private cloud. One is on-premise, which is obvious. Right? It's self-managed. That means you do have a team of you know, ops guys you know, to install, to set up, to manage um, OpenStack on-premise. Manage private, right? This is, you know, third party, you know, coming in remotely to manage your private cloud environment. Lastly, public management, right? So this is um, like our partners, you know, our CCSP partners where, you know, you get, the, you know, you go to our partners, right, to host your open stack onto that, you know, onto the data center that's hosted within their data centers and managed by our CCSP partners for you. Right, so three, you know, kind of how private cloud is being managed today. Right, let's look at what the benefits of using private cloud. Right, so if you look at our customers today, Red Hat customers, whether they are in the FSIs, right, whether they are in the oil and gas companies, whether they are in aviation company, or whether they are all commercial companies, right, what OpenStack or private cloud gives them is really about security, better security, better control, of their applications and data, right? Because it's hosted on premise, right? They can have their existing security policies in place, their governance, right? In place to manage the on premise environment, right? Which in turn, you know, help them to better manage their costs from a cost perspective per se, right? What about agility, right? Because the private cloud environment allows you to scale on demand, up and down, right? Give you more compute resources or less compute resources. Right, you know, to meet your business, uh, to meet your business needs, right, and of course at the same time serving, like compute resources to the multiple line of business in your organization. Right, what about container platform, right, as part of the hybrid cloud journey, right? What exactly are containers, right? What are containers? Any show of hands? Who knows what are containers are, right? One or two, three, four, right. So containers, right? If you think about it, containers are very different from virtual machines, right? So you do have virtual machines that you install a full-fledged you know, operating system on it, but container is very different. Container, the way we treat it, containers are like kind of packaging format where you only will package your know, applications, dependencies, and the runtime into the container, right? What it means is that you, know, you get containers instead of virtual machines without the guest operating system running it. That means it's much lighter than a virtual machine, right? And what happens in the terms of isolations, right? This is where, you know, instead of like a hypervisor that is helping you to manage the virtual machines, you have the operating systems like, you know, Red Hat and Presonix to help you to do the um, isolations between containers, right? But what, how I think about containers in the real world is about shipping containers, right? In the shipping containers today, you know, you pack your goods in, right? You, you pack your applications, you pack your runtimes, you pack your libraries into the containers and you ship it around the world, right? Whether it's, you know, whether it's a part of Singapore, whether it's a part of Shanghai, whether it's a part of Hong Kong, your container gets delivered intact, your goods get delivered intact, untouched, and gets deployed when you arrived, right? So what can we do with containers? So what, right? You talk, we talk about shipping it around the world, right? Same thing for workload, right? It's workload portability because a container arrives intact, Right, can be deployed on multiple environments as long as you have a container orchestration platform right, that runs, supported, certified across multiple environments. Right? Containers helps to support microservices or even DevOps today. Right? Of course, you can run microservices using virtual machines. Right? But would you do that? No, I wouldn't. Right? 
And about containers, you can build security into the application lifecycle as part of the CI CD pipeline. Think about it, right? Everything that's packed into a container, right, gets shipped around, arrived intact, unmodified. Right? So that what it means to you is about your SIT, your UAT, your production environment. You can be sure that what is in the container, right, is actually the same code that's deployed into multiple stages of your application lifecycle. Now let's look at what, where are containers being used today, right? So this is another survey that Red Hat did. You notice that most of them are running on virtual machines, right? Nobody runs containers, you know, mostly or not on bare metal, off premise, right? Mostly run it on a CAS container as a service, or even platform as a service, right? So that's where most of the workloads are being moved, right? Running on the cloud today, right? So how can Red Hat help you? as part of your hybrid cloud journey, right? If you think about it, Red Hat, we have a whole suite of um, solutions or portfolio. From, the, from your left, we talk about Red Hat Enterprise Linux, right, which is the foundation, right? So this is the, you know, what we have been doing for the last 20, 25 years is about operating systems, right? So this is the foundation OS that, you know, is certified, supported on your multiple environments, right? 10 years life cycle, right, um, for all your, you know, whether it's on-premise or on the cloud environments. What about your mode one, uh, mode two workload? You have rehab virtualization, right? You have OpenStack, right? So this is where we talk about mode one, mode two, scale up, or you scale up horizontally, where OpenStack is a private cloud, right? You can scale on demand, you get all the agility um, that you can have for a private cloud. OpenShift, right? This is interesting. We had OpenShift container platform, right? Which is a container platform a management orchestration of containers workload across um, your environments, right? whether it's on-premise or on the cloud, you can have the same look and feel, same manageability of your containers across multiple environments. What about storage? Right? So Red Hat today, we have you know, Red Hat storage, right? which is a um, software-defined storage that allows you to scale horizontally, um, regardless whether you know, based off of commodity hardware. Right? So it runs on-premise, it runs on the cloud if you want to. Right. So if you look at solutions, you look at how Red Hat can help from a services perspective. Right. We do have a training, we do have our certifications right, to help you, you know, to get your staff trained. Right. Support, yes, of course, if you need to get a certified you know, platform to run, you, know, you can call our support and we do have you know, great support engineers. Consulting, right. so this is the guys that will help you to, you know, to get across the line if you need be, these are world-class support engineers, or rather consulting engineers, right? Consultants that we have here in Singapore, world-class, right? Hardware and software certifications, right? So these are, you know, as part of the value from Red Hat is to, you know, to make sure, to ensure that whatever you're buying from us, right? The, the solutions right, is actually certified and work well on the hardware or whether it's on-premise or onto the cloud. Right, so let's, I think in about five minutes left, Let's talk about use cases, case study. Right, so these are the use cases, the um, case studies about hybrid cloud environments. Especially today, I'm just gonna focus more on about Cathay Pacific, but which is you know, in this region. Right, Cathay Pacific Airlines. Right, I'm sure you guys are aware what is Cathay Pacific. Right? It's just a airline, international airline that's based out of Hong Kong. Right? It's, you know, it serves 200 destinations across 52 countries and territories. Right, so Cathay Pacific is very interesting, right? Because as part of their promotion kind of strategy, marketing strategy, they have something called the um, Cathay Pacific Fan Fair, right? Which basically runs every Tuesday at 8 a.m. in the morning, right? So what happens in that is that, you know, you get the best deal, right? Every Tuesday at 8 a.m., you log into the website, you log into the mobile to grab the best deal, best flight deals, right? So what happens in that scenario is that 100,000 customers are logging onto the environment, right? To basically to grab the best deals, right? And it puts immense pressure, right? Onto their legacy infrastructure, right? You know, it's just not possible to scale, right? Their infrastructure to meet that demand, right? So together with Red Hat, right? Together with Cathay Pacific, right? As part of their digital transformation journey, right? They started on the hybrid cloud journey, right? So what happens in that scenario is that they're using containers. You talk about agility with containers, right? They are able to you know, speed up software um, developments, right? Instead of, you know, just deploying 20 applications per day, right? Today, they are deploying up to 200 applications per day onto containers, whether it's on-premise 
or whether it's on the cloud, right? And the software developments are basically 67% much faster today, right? Way much more improvements than what they can do previously on their legacy infrastructure. Okay? So let's, you know, we talk about open hybrid cloud, right? We talk about how do you run, you know, different workloads across multiple environments, right? We talk about, you know, management ability. We talk about what is the vision, right, to get there? What are the challenges? What are the mitigation strategies? Right? What do you need to think about, right, across multiple environments? But at the end of the day, right, an open, a true open hybrid cloud, right, prevents you, right, from getting vendor lock-in. And that is very, very important. Okay? All right? And that's all I have for the, you know, just for this afternoon first session. Thank you so much.